Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you with fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Unknown gunmen strike again in Pakistan, Hafiz Said's aide Hansla killed in Karachi. Open fire incident in Gilgit, Baltistan instigates public aggression. And PDM Chief Manzoor Pashtin remanded in Islamabad police custody. In the past two years, more than a dozen terrorists from New Delhi's most wanted list have been mysteriously killed in Pakistan. The slain terrorists were associated with groups such as lashkar e taiba Hizbul Mujahideen and jaish e Mohammed. Recently, a close aide of terror, L.E.T. chief Hafiz Saeed, was killed by unknown gunmen near his residence in Karachi. A report. On the intervening night of 2nd and 3rd December, lashkar e taiba terrorist Hanzala Adnan was shot by unknown gunmen near his residence in Karachi. Hanzala Adnan was considered to be a close aide of terror group chief Hafiz Saeed. Four bullets were found in his body. Hanzala was the mastermind of the 2015 Udhampur attack, wherein a border security force convoy was targeted by the L.E.T. terrorists. Two BSF soldiers were killed in this attack, while 13 other Jawans were injured. Hanzala was also the mastermind behind the 2016 attack on a CRPF convoy in Palmpur, which claimed the lives of eight soldiers. Hanzala Adnan's death came after Khalistani terrorist Lakbir Singh Road, the nephew of Jarnal Singh Bhindrawale, died in Pakistan on December 2. In the past two years, more than a dozen terrorists from New Delhi's most wanted list have been mysteriously killed in Pakistan. The slain terrorists were associated with groups such as lashkar e taiba Hezbollah Mujahideen and jaish e Muhammad. The targets of these gunmen are either criminals or individuals listed as wanted terrorists by the Indian government. The Ministry of External Affairs in India has issued its statement on the target killings. Those who are um, wanted for in India to face justice for criminal and terrorist activities and extremists, we would like them to come to India and face uh, our legal system. But I cannot comment on developments that are taking place um, in Pakistan. I don't have any additional info than what I see on media. So I will not be able to comment further on that. The unidentified attackers leave no trace or evidence behind once they eliminate a terrorist. Their approach is to arrive, carry out their duties and then depart. Two important things stand out in Pakistan's streak of assassination of terrorists in their country. One is the modus operandi. Almost all the killings have happened on two-wheeler bone gunmen. And secondly, Almost all those terrorists killed were waging a war against India. In my opinion, it is a gang war rivalry because these terrorists are now fighting with each other to gain the control of these terrorist organizations. These unidentified assailants have expanded their arsenal of techniques to include poisoning in addition to using guns to take out their target. Inside Pakistan's central jail at Dera Ghazi Khan, lashkar e taiba terrorist Sajid Mir, who gained notoriety for his part in organizing and carrying out the Mumbai 26-11 attacks, was poisoned. The series of assassinations began after a failed attempt on the life of the L.E.T. founder and the mastermind of the 2008 Mumbai attacks, Hafiz Saeed, in Lahore in 2021. In the first two weeks of November, three senior L.E.T. J.E.M. terrorists, including a close aide of Maulana Masood Azhar and the chief recruiter of L.E.T., were shot dead. Other key terrorists who were shot dead by unknown gunmen include Riaz Ahmad, Maulana Ziaur Rahman, Mufti Kaisar Farooqi, Mullah Sardar Hussain Aran, Paramjit Singh Panjwar, Bashir Ahmad Peer, Sayyid Noor, 
Sayyid Khalid Raza and Mystery Zahur Ibrahim. Pakistan security situation will go from bad to worse with the Pakistani army not able to control the internal security situation of Pakistan and the Pakistani police as it is is inefficient. There are dark times ahead for Pakistan and the day is not far when more gang wars and more killings will take place in the streets of Pakistan. Many defense experts say that terrorists in Pakistan are being killed in gang rivalry. In recent months, some key operatives working for Pakistan's ISI have been killed in various gang wars in Karachi and other places. People in Pakistan appear to have accepted the reality that people go missing and if they are lucky, they will suddenly turn up one day. Enforced disappearances is a serious and long-standing issue in the Islamic Republic. Recently, the chief of Pashtun Tahafuz movement, Manzoor Pashtin, was remanded to Islamabad police by an anti-terrorism court on seven-day physical remand in a case registered in Tarnul police station. Manzoor Pashtin was reportedly abducted by Pakistani intelligence services. Supporters of Manzoor Pashtin are saying that the abduction and detention of their leader was yet another effort at pushing Pashtun youth to violence. On December 7, an anti-terrorism court in Islamabad handed over Pashtun Tahafuz movement chief Manzoor Pashtin to Islamabad police on seven-day physical remand in a case registered in Tarnul police station. Earlier, Manzoor Pashtin was reportedly abducted by Pakistani intelligence services. The incident was reported a day after he was arrested by the police for addressing a protest to demand free cross-border movement with Afghanistan. The 29-year-old activist was arrested when he was travelling from the Balochistan's border town of Chaman to Turbat. Chaman Deputy Commissioner Raja Athar Abbas has claimed that Pashtin was arrested for firing on police vehicles. However, the PTM has denied the charge. Supporters of Manzoor Pashtin are saying that the abduction and detention of their leader was yet another effort at pushing Pashtun youth to violence. Today, we have Mr. Manzoor Pashtun in Chaman, that we have a very big deal with our brothers and sisters and brothers and sisters and sisters. तुरबत जाएंगे और वहाँ पर उनका जो एहतजाजी दरना बेटा है उसमें शिरकत करेंगे। तो जब हम गाड़ियों के काफले के साथ चमन से बाहर निकल रहे थे, तो किसी इशारे रुकने का इशारा या हमें रोकने के बजाय, जब हम थोड़ा आ गए चमन शहर में, तो वहाँ पर एफसी, पुलिस, लेवीज और आर्मी के लोग कड़े थे, � ना उन्होंने हमें रुकने का इशारा किया था या ना उन्होंने हमें रुकने का कहा था अगर वो हमें रोक देते गिरफ्तारी से तो हम नहीं डर नहीं डरते ना मशर मंजूर गिरफ्तारी से डरते तो हम रुक जाते गिरफ्तारी दे देते जब थोड़ा आगे चले गए अपने साथियों के साथ मशवरा किया तो साथियों ने बताया फिर जब हम वहाँ पर जाने की कोशिश करने लगे, तो रोड तो मुझे मालूम नहीं कि कौन सा रोड था, लेकिन वहाँ पर तकरीबन चार पांच गाड़ियों ने, जिसमें तकरीबन सात सत्तर मुसल्ला लोग थे, उन्होंने हमें गिर लिया, मुझे नूरबाचा और मुशर्रफ मंजूर को अलहदा अलहदा गाड़ियों में डाल दिया, फिर द तकरीबन मुझे और हमारे जो सुबाई कोऑर्डिनेटर हैं नूर बचा उसको छोड़ दिया गया और मुशर्रफ मंजूर को ये लोग अपने साथ ले गए। On several occasions, armed men have abducted political activists and human rights defenders in Pakistan. Enforced disappearances is a serious and long-standing issue in the Islamic Republic. People in Pakistan appear to have accepted the reality that people go missing and if they are lucky, they will suddenly turn up one day. One of the most significant concerns in Pakistan's biggest but poor province, Balochistan, is the issue of enforced disappearances. 
Numerous activists, journalists and intellectuals have been reported missing, allegedly abducted by security forces or intelligence agencies. According to human rights organizations, such cases have been substantial. Reports have emerged of extrajudicial killings carried out by security forces in Pakistan. Thousands of cases of enforced disappearances remain unresolved in Pakistan. चमन में एक धरना बैठा हुआ है रियासत की पॉलिसियों के खिलाफ वो एहतजाज कर रहे हैं इसी तरह से कश्मीर में पिछले छह आठ महीनों से एक तहरीक चल रही है पूरा कश्मीर सड़कों पर है वो रियासत की पॉलिसियों के खिलाफ एहतजाज कर रहे हैं इसी तरह से चिलास में कल एक बस पर गोलियां चलाई गई जिसमें आठ लोग मारे गए वहाँ पे गिलगित में सब्सिडी आटे पे खत्म की गई है वो सारे एहतजाज कर रहे हैं इसी तरह से बलोच एहतजाज कर रहे हैं कोई बंदा इस वक्त रियासत से खुश नहीं है Baloch and Pashtun political activists have raised growing issue of enforced disappearances in Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in the United Nations Human Rights Council. Even though the successive governments in Pakistan have promised to make the practice illegal, people are still being forcibly banished with impunity. And now let's talk about Gilgit Baltistan. Here the violence targeting innocent civilians and tourists has forced the people to express their aggression. The most recent incident of an attack on a civilian bus resulted in the killing of several people. Now the security situation in Gilgit Baltistan is being questioned and the people are angry as they are the ones who end up being a target for terror elements. However, the residents of Gilgit Baltistan are now determined to make their voices be heard by the administration. Take a look. In a horrifying incident in Diyama district of the illegally occupied territory Gilgit Baltistan, a group of terrorists ambushed a local bus killing nine and injuring at least 26. As per the accounts of victims, the terrorists opened fire at the Rawalpindi bound bus on the Karakoram highway near Chilas town in the Diyama district. The driver lost control of the bus and crashed into a truck coming from the opposite side. The terrorists continued firing, taking lives and harming more passengers in the bus. The people of Gilgit Baltistan condemned the terror attack and openly protested against the local administration for their inability to curb terror incidents in the illegally occupied territory. At many occasions, Islamabad has played hand in glove in inciting sectarian violence in Gilgit Baltistan. Gilgit Baltistan is dominated by the Shia community who have been targeted on several occasions by terrorists from Sunni community. The local residents have been paying a heavy price due to the rise of sectarian violence. चिलास हुड़ूर के मुकाम पे जो सफाकाना दशेदगर्दी हुई है उसकी और उसमें शहीद होने वाले अफराद जख्मी होने वाले अफराद दोनों तरफ से जो गाड़ियों का तसादुम हुआ फायरिंग के नतीजे में 
ان کے ساتھ عوامی ورکر پارٹی بھرپور اظہار یکجہتی اور اظہار ہمدردی کرتی ہے اور عوامی ورکر پارٹی یہ سمجھتی ہے اس مسئلے میں کلگت بلدستان کے عوام جب بھی متحد ہوتے ہیں اٹھاسی کا ٹینشن کرایا جاتا ہے نبے کا ٹینشن کرایا جاتا ہے بانوے کا ٹینشن کرایا جاتا ہے دو ہزار پانچ کا ٹینشن کرایا جاتا ہے دو ہزار بارہ کا ٹینشن کرایا جاتا ہے اور یہ واقعات پہ در پہ ہو رہے ہیں In August 2012, as many as 25 Shia Muslims from Gilgit, Baltistan were forced out of a bus and killed in a sectarian attack in the Naran Valley of Manshera district of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Around 50 assailants wearing army uniforms stopped three buses heading from Islamabad to Astor district in Gilgit, Baltistan and a van heading from Gilgit. The victims were checked for their identity documents before they were lined up and killed. The horrifying terror incident in Chilas again points towards the inadequacy of Islamabad government in countering terrorism. And London-based not-for-profit NGO, the Democracy Forum, TDF, recently organized a webinar titled Why Has China's Belt and Road Initiative Failed to Take Off in Nepal? Where panelists express their views on the causes of the failure of the project. Everything from funding and transparency concerns to the nation's complicated geopolitical position was discussed. A report. In 2017, Nepal signed up to China's Belt and Road Initiative. However, nothing has been accomplished after six years. No memorandum of understanding within the BRI framework was signed by the Prime Minister of Nepal during his eight-day visit to China in September. In June, Nepal's Foreign Minister confirmed that not a single project in the country had been carried out under the initiative after China claimed that the Pokhara International Airport would be the BRI's flagship project. Recently, London-based not-for-profit NGO, the Democracy Forum, organized a webinar titled Why Has China's Belt and Road Initiative Failed to Take Off in Nepal? where panelists express their views on the cause of the failure of the project. Everything from funding and transparency concerns to the nation's complicated geopolitical position was discussed. On September the 30th, the Prime Minister of Nepal completed an official visit to China and signed 12 memoranda of understandings but at a press conference on his return, studiously avoided confirming if any of the agreements were entered under the Belt and Road Initiative, the BRI. As the diplomat concludes, I quote, Nepal signed on to China's ambitious infrastructure project in 2017, but six years later, the two countries have almost nothing to show for it. Political analysis say that Nepal has become increasingly wary of Chinese loans amid Sri Lankan's financial collapse and fresh US funding. Nepal is also aware of the situation in its neighborhood Pakistan, which after signing up for massive Chinese debt funding, infrastructure projects slipped into economic crisis and is now caught in political turmoil. Jeopardizing local interest, the CPEC project in Pakistan intends to benefit China and hence faces stiff resistance from the Baloch people. The exploitation of local resources for Beijing's advantage is unbearable for Baloch who are already facing atrocities unleashed by the Pakistani security forces. Increasing checkpoints and unlawful fishing by Chinese trawlers in the area have forced locals to protest against the Chinese presence. Pakistan is now the world's largest recipient of Chinese grants and assistance. This is the ultimate achievement Islamabad has gained through CPEC. However, while the BRI is understandably viewed with optimism in some quarters given its potential, 
to deliver investments, jobs, transformational infrastructure projects, and general economic development, it is viewed with considerable and perhaps increasing anxiety by others in relation to non-performing assets and the implications of some countries not being able to meet their debt obligations. Um, indeed, it can be argued that some recipient countries are starting to feel the negative effects of Chinese BRR financing gone wrong. BRI loans are much higher than the loans provided by other multilateral organizations. The average interest rate of BRI project is 4.2% with a grace period of less than 2 years and a maturity length of less than 10 years. Nepal's reluctance to fully embrace the BRI is also linked to concerns about its constitutional obligation for non-alignment. The fear that Chinese interference might lead to financial disaster is the main reason behind the non-implementation of Chinese projects in Nepal. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Lipakshi Kurana signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. <laughs>